was, is there a huge divide in your approach to writing something like a screenplay versus a game? And I know I've asked that question a lot to a lot of people, but what I mean is, is do you diverge greatly from that three act structure or does that still sort of at the core of any story that you try to tell? Cause in, in certain instances you're telling, you're going well beyond the two hour storytelling of a movie into maybe a 20 or potentially 40 or potentially if you're talking fallout, like 60 hour experience. How do you wrap your head around that? And like, where does that even start? Does Those that are like, like six questions to wrap? Sorry. <laughs> I mean, like, uh, so no, like, it's fine. Yeah. I mean, we've got all day. <laughs> um, well, I can start by saying that the, clearly writing a movie and writing a game are different, uh, vi- different jobs and different beasts, but in the same way that writing a comic book and writing a movie are different. And, mm-hmm. and and people seem to think that a comic book is a storyboard for a movie, but actually it isn't. And um, and writing television is different than writing a movie. So I, I feel like every every medium is in it unique in, in, in itself and... Um, you know, you you need to kind of learn the strengths and mm. avoid the weaknesses. Um, so there is also commonalities. Games and movies are visual. Mm-hmm. First of all, they're visual media. Movies have more in common. Pardon me. Movies are, have more in common with games than than people would expect. Um, you know, I see a, a more direct parallel between movies and games than games and theater, for example. Mm-hmm. So there's that. And and there's elements that you can bring from games to movies like characters, environment, world building, uh, you know, having having to show rather than rely on, you know, the thoughts of mm-hmm. a character. All those things migrate pretty seamlessly. Right. Um and the concept of interactivity, which, you know, it's a big word that sometimes we're still figuring out how that affects storytelling, that clearly doesn't apply. But still, that doesn't mean that movies are not interactive. They're just interactive in a different way, like books are interactive in a different way. And mm-hmm. I don't mean that books are interactive because you flip the pages. <laughs> I now. mean that, you know, you have an element of introspection and, and building in your head that um, you know happens differently in in film than it happens in in a game. In in a game, maybe you have more agency, and and in film, you have a little more time to kind of intec- intellectualize some of that mm-hmm. agency. Um, you know, in a, it's the classic example in a movie, you're trying to second guess the killer. In in the game, you're actually going after him physically, but you're participating. Right. If you weren't participating in a movie, you would get bored and you would be texting, and then Colin would be shouting at you. <laughs> so, um, right? Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, that's it. So, yeah. in terms of like the three act structure, mm. that's like a really big conversation for um, you know a lecture more than a, than an interview. But basically, you know, there's people in film that will tell you. I don't follow the three act structure. What are you talking about? Um, and I, I'll tell you that Red Dead followed the three act structure mm-hmm. to the point that the environment was divided in three because we wanted to have a first act in the frontier, a second act in Mexico, and a third act with a resolution and an epilogue mm, okay. uh, in uh, West Elizabeth, what we called the North back in the day. So, um, you know, you can literally, there's different ways to. Uh, skin the cat mm. but but I guess what you want is structure fundamentally you you, you can use uh, you know Aristotelian poetics or the three x structure or Sid field whatever you want as long as you kind of tr- have a plan for putting it all together mm. and uh, and if the three x structure works for you then it ultimately the goal is to keep it invisible Right and and just tell a good story, um, but but every story has a beginning, a middle, and the end, and that's the three act structure. So, I don't know. I know we're going long on this topic. I do want to segue over to sort of. I brought him. I brought him here to talk about stuff like yeah, this. Yeah, and so I, I feel like right. I feel like okay. we can we can just split this into two. So that's totally fine. So yeah, I mean, so then uh, the question is, you know, when you when you're writing a screenplay, right, you can take a look at your sort of dramatic beats per scene, and you can you can tell when you're 
you could, I guess it, I would I would assume it would be easier to tell if a scene's working better in a movie than and and it's gonna you're going after a certain emotion uh, emotion that you're trying to evoke with that scene or with those characters than it is in a game because you're not necessarily in control of the pacing of how that's going to be given to the audience. How do you how do you rectify that? How do you know that? Or I guess it's just I guess trial and error because I guess with a with a with a game you can go back and kind of kind of fix moments. But how as a writer do you go okay? This is going to hit. This is going to have an emotional impact. And you mentioned The Last of Us, and obviously, like these guys won't shut up about it. I've never played it because I had a, I didn't have a PS3. But um, now, what's your excuse? You got well, a PS4. I got no excuse now. So I went, eventually, <laughs> I will pay. Uh, but how do you know? I mean, is it the same? I and mean, you've now written, obviously. I'm assuming more than one screenplay. You don't. I, I, I'm guessing you didn't come out of the gate being like, "This is the first screenplay I ever wrote. Let's go make another movie." Yeah, that, that was it. I didn't go made and. No. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously you have experience with that, but but when you're writing the game, like is that the same feeling of like I just wrote this cool thing and I think it's gonna get this emotion across and then it happens, or is there a lot more trial and error to that? Well, first of all, don't think that the screenplay for a minute, don't think that the screenplay is the movie. Because it's not. Right. The screenplay is a map and then there's the road. Mm-hmm. And that's it. So the screenplay is not the movie in the same way that the screenplay for the story in a game is not the game. Or the game design document is not the game. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, these are just tools. The only thing, the only time when something that's on the paper stays on paper is the novel, is the short story. That's when the, the destination matches the, the instrument that's been created on, and so they are one-to-one. You write a book and you read a book. Mm-hmm. But when you write a screenplay, the screenplay is not the movie. The screenplay is one of many steps and building blocks that go into making the movie. So actually, making the movie requires a screenplay, it requires actors, it requires sets, it requires... Uh, you know, so many sound and music that is not even in the screenplay. And yet, sound and music are, like, so important to a film. Mm -hmm. Um, And even to a game, something like Manhunt. It really came together when Craig Connor and his team started putting in the score and the sound effects. It, it It went from this is kind of scary to this is incredibly terrifying <laughs> and it sounds horrible. So, um, you know, it, it, but that's, that stuff is not even on the page. So I guess my way to answer that is that you don't know it until you do it. Right. You don't, you don't know if a game mechanic is going to work until you build it. You don't know if a story beat in a game cutscene is going to work until you're at the very least either pre it or shooting it on a performance capture stage and then going, that's not working. Do we have the writer here or do we make it up? <laughs> and, and in a movie, it, it, it happens on, on set. I'm, it, it's, a, it's a big surprise, maybe, but um, you know the actors bring so much to the process. The environment brings so much and the director and everybody else brings so much. That at the end of the day, you write it, Step one, you shoot it, so you rewrite it that way, Mm -hmm. and then you edit it, you rewrite it that way. Mm -hmm. So what what you get at the end is really um, a a process of different iterations. And I feel like iterating is really key to a lot of art. Painting, sculpture, games, movies, Mm -hmm. you you kind of put it out there and you look at it, and you go, ah, I need a little more over here. I need to sculpt the nose a little better. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it, it's the same whether you're building the horse, sculpting you know, the David, or making a movie. You just do it. You put it out there, take a step back, you look at it, and then you go, now nah, I need to work on the nose a little better. Mm. This might be a good segue into into the film because I, I'm curious about this, being that you're you're you you kind of exist in both worlds. You exist in the kind of the gaming realm and then the realm of, of film. This sounds so sci-fi. Uh, it, it is. He it's, exists in both worlds. It's, it is. It's, Christian Cantamesa. It is. It's Stargate. Um, is there? I, and I'm curious about this, and I'm not asking. You know, not that I would know any names anyway, but. Is there a pretension in film that you kind of made your first film about people that work on games? In other words, is there? 
if you tell like a film writer or someone who works on film, like, oh, I wrote Red Dead, I wrote, I wrote these games. Do they, do they, is that something that's taken very seriously in in the film industry, or is there some sort of like those aren't? That's not art. That's those cute. Aren't, yeah, that's, that's cute. Glad we, you we make, you make games, dogs. but we make films. And is there anything like that, or is there kind um, of an understanding of how important storytelling is in games now and how progressive it is? So, I've I've been in the industry for a while, and I can tell you that at the beginning, maybe five or six years ago, maybe even a little more, the attitude sometimes was like that, sometimes. Um, now, it's absolutely not. Right now, I, every meeting I have and every person I talk to, at the very least, there is um, a sense of interest and respect for uh, a form of entertainment and sometimes uh, an art form that is different. Uh, it, it's nascent, is you know, not even nascent. It's now in its, um, you know, growing up pains, but um, v- very, very interesting at the least. And a lot of people in Hollywood are just gamers. There's just a lot of people that I go meet and they're like, you big red, red you worked on a red dad oh my god and 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 it and it's great because maybe they did like a big movie and i'm like you made that movie oh my god <laughs> and then it becomes like a mutual mutual admiration society but but I, I feel like it's not predominant anymore there's a lot of new executives there's a lot of people paying attention and you know in general i feel like it it's it it's better if not straight good. Um, that said, I feel like games should... S- s- sometimes I see that in games, as ridiculous as it sounds, but s- sometimes I feel like the television industry and the movie industry are this sort of like slightly more um, open industries to you know, other people's ideas mm-hmm. and collaborations mm-hmm. and cross-pollination. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I feel games are the one industry that's becoming a bit of a citadel that is like, oh, you're not a you're not a game designer with 25 years of experience. You have no place in this company. And that's why I'm so happy about the indie scene because I feel like a lot of these great ideas are going in there because sometimes the more, you know, triple a established industry is just entrenched sure in the way they were doing things and and if we look at the history of cinema that happened to film as well like the, the studio system in the 40s and the 30s and 40s and 50s made great films Casablanca, boom mm-hmm. but at the same time it was a citadel it was very insular it was impossible to get in and eventually it was its own downfall and um and maybe we're kind of bypassing that because there was no indie scene. Sure. So we're, we're maybe bypassing that in games by being smart and doing things that way. And I, and I hope so because uh, because nobody wants the sort of creative um, stuck in a rut situation. Mm. So now you bring up stuck in a rut. And so like my question for you then, you finish Red Dead. You, you, you got your it's 60 hours of gameplay. Yeah. <laughs> That's how long it took to make, right? Yeah. You finish off Red Dead in the, the you know that was kind of like they wanted you to get one more one more year on the moisture farm. So then like for you you finish that game and is it you wanted to go work on another game which becomes something like Shadow of Mordor or it was that you wanted to go make movies? No, I, become... yeah, after Red Dead I um I left the company yeah. and you know I had a desire to kind of change a little bit and uh, do something different. Um, so I, I I didn't I didn't do games for for a bit. Okay. Um, I mean, Red Dead came out in 2011, and uh, Shadow of Mordor came out last, last year. year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so uh, there was uh, a gap. Were you quizzing there. us there? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, no, I have very bad memory for these things. But um, and in the meantime, I did some you know game writing here and there yeah. and I, um, some freelancing here and there but I fundamentally just focused on film and I did a bunch of short films and some were really terrible and I've buried them with DT e. in, <laughs> in, a, in a ditch somewhere. I can't wait for the, the documentary in 20 years digging well, them out. Hopefully I'll be gone by then. Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, whenever they dig them up and, and some of them did better and yeah. you know one it's um, it, it's the one that kind of 
got me a little more traction and uh, between my work in games and my work in with the short films I got uh, an agent and a manager and all gotcha. that sort of like interesting stuff and then I wrote Air with Chris Passetto whom I met working on Red Dead Redemption oh. uh, yeah it was uh, oh, it was back a, to Red Dead. he was a designer on the game and we and he was another you know movie buff and really into sort of writing and Making little movies, so I I, I co-wrote a short film with him, um, How I Survived the Zombie Apocalypse, um, and we were you know we were really happy with the way it turned out, as happy as you can be with like a ten minute short film. That yeah. is, you know, it is what it is, made for no money. But we were, we kind of enjoyed the collaboration and making movies, and we wrote air. We literally wrote the short film, and then we said oh how is it going to be like to write something a little bigger, but still kind of contained sure. and still character driven? And how I survived the zombie apocalypse is a mother and son, in the um, in the zombie apocalypse, and that was that that movie came out in two thousand and one. So it's like the Last of Us free. I we didn't we didn't even look at that. Don't worry, don't worry. Um, uh, we Neil can't... Druckmann ripped you off. I understand. It's a completely different story, but Druckmann. Drug me again, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, completely different. Um, but it, it was like, okay, that was a mother and son, so it's a family. Sure. Um, and then we thought, let's do something with like two best friends. Okay. Two, 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 two. Hold on, don't be stepping on air yet. Let's. Because this step. topic, we're in topic two, which is game versus movies, and we're wrapping it up here since you have it both. But so I want to. Oh, you know guys is, have a plan? Oh, I I changed it on the go because that's, that's how good I am. For it. Yeah. Well, the, the garbage truck is on fire and rolls down the street, and you just kind of our, our blueprints are like an etch a sketch where they just get shaken yeah. all the times, and it just becomes a fucking collage and nothing. So then, wrapping this up, the, we're about to, the topic three is going to be air, all about it. So you're working on air, but then you get you start working on Shadows of Mordor as well, which is interesting because it's set in the movie universe. You know, it's like you're back to making now a movie game that is a game that's just in the you know what I mean, like. What what pulled you back in? You were out. You were making your movies. I wasn't making air at the time. Um, you know, making a movie is easy. We make them every day. Yeah, we don't have this up exactly no time. like that. You put that over there. <laughs> well, we don't even have a guy behind the camera. The, the <laughs> yeah. door is our cameraman right now. Hi, door. It's very slim. Yeah. Very slim cameraman. <laughs> um, I, I I think that the 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 lead time from writing a script to actually getting the script made. Assuming that it gets made, yeah, which is a big assumption, is at the very least three to five years. Good lord! So, and and if you're a film first time filmmaker, I mean, if you're Quentin Tarantino, it potentially sure. is much less. But if you're a first time filmmaker, that could be ten, it could be never, it could be mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. So, so we wrote Air. Chris and I wrote Air in 2010. Oh right? wow! Okay. And then we capped. And so that was the first draft. And then we kept... So that was while we were still working on right, that. Sure, mm -hmm. sure, sure, sure. And then we kept kind of putting it away, put in a drawer, let's finish... You know, I, I have to finish the game. Yeah. It's kind of taking a lot of time of my life to do that. And then, you know, we want to, you know, rewrite it. And then somebody reads it and... We didn't, I didn't have a presentation at the time, so it was like, what do we do with this? Meh, maybe we're just going to you know, shoot it ourselves. So we wrote it really small Yeah, that we could shoot it in, in, in this place. You're, you're welcome to use this place anytime. I wanted to. Thank you. You're going to have and Kevin, then, too, if you need to. Yeah, he's going to be one of the guys. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I'm doing a version with five people. <laughs> and then, well, that's and our then, life. If you watch this movie, in many ways, Chips and Forms, it mirrors our life. In that one day, Greg. It does not. If I ever I get trapped in a room with you. Maybe I should leave You're, now. It's not even topic three yet. <laughs> right, fine. Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ.